So the goal for this warm up is for you guys to actually have tried this first page first with your compasses with pencils to see if you could create, as it describes, uh, use a compass to see if you can draw a circle that passes through each of the four quadrilaterals vertices. So could you kind of trial and error figure out how to get a circle that passes perfectly through all four vertices? And we're just going to see how that should have maybe turned out. And the first one, uh, a little trial and error may have been needed here, but you should have been able to create one that did work. And the second one, if you tried that one, that one also worked to create a circle that fits all four of those vertices perfectly around. But in the third one, it did not work. No matter how hard we tried, just couldn't make that happen. And I could make it so that you essentially had three vertices that it went through, but notice that fourth one, it does not. So not all quadrilaterals can make that happen where you have a circle that fits perfectly around and contains all four vertices. But when you can do that, and this is the part we're gonna kind of try to do together here, when you can do that, that's called a cyclic quadrilateral. Okay, cyclic quadrilateral. If you wanna just write in um, all four vertices are on the same circle that goes around the quadrilateral. So that is going to be true for this one that you see, although the circle isn't drawn yet. It is going to be possible. We're going to see kind of how that works. We're going to see, though, how we could, if we were constructing it, like you have a paper right now, so how could we actually get that on paper? Uh, let's take a look. So the first thing it says is to draw diagonal BD. So we're going to draw diagonal B to D. Do that on your paper. And we're then asked, how is this diagonal related to the circumscribed circle? So we don't see the circle quite yet. Um, and if we think about a circle that fits perfectly around that quadrilateral, like we had in the first page, you know, how would that diagonal, if I draw in a diagonal here, how would that diagonal um, relate to the circle? So sometimes it looks like it's a diameter going directly across, but that's not necessarily true. That's not necessarily going to go through the center of the circle. It is a chord of the circle. It is a segment that has endpoints on the circle, so it is a chord, um, but it doesn't necessarily go through the center. That said, this one, I believe, is a diameter. BD is a diameter, and it's because we know an additional piece of information here. Maybe you saw it down here, but we have this right angle. Think of what that means. If this quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, visualize that circle going around, this BCD angle is actually an inscribed angle that will open up to a semicircle arc over here of 180 degrees. All right, and if its endpoints are BD, that means that that has to be 180 degrees arc, which means that BD has to be a diameter. So we do know that since angle C is a right angle and would be an inscribed angle in a circle, that BD segment forms a 180 degree arc and BD is a diameter. So BD is a diameter. Now let's, let's go ahead and see if we can make that on GeoGebra. So we're going to go in and also see if we can answer some of these other questions as well. So let's open up the link here. And all right, so let's, let's go through and kind of get to where we were. And I'm actually going to maybe split my screen here a little bit. Oh, I gotta go back. All right, let's get this screen split going. All right, so let's first draw in that 
diameter. So, or that segment first, that diagonal, actually it was a diagonal segment first. If you follow along up here, there's this tool and then it gives you a, a number of options under the tool. So I'm gonna click the segment tool. So again, if you click that, you're gonna have a few options if it doesn't start that. And then you can just click the two segments that you, or the two points that you wanna draw a line between, a line segment, and there you go. All right, so now we're going to um, draw a circle that we know that this is going to be a cyclic quadrilateral. So we actually know that a circle is gonna fit around this. So let's pick the circle tool and then we're going to need to select this one of the sub tools. So if you want to find that one, and then all you have to do is pick three points and it'll draw the circle around those three. So I'm going to pick like B, C, D. So notice now we have that circle that is called the circumscribed circle because it fits perfectly around the quadrilateral. And now we can maybe see um, that the B, C, D angle is an inscribed angle in the circle. And since that's 90 degrees, that BD arc, maybe we should say this arc BAD is going to be a semicircle arc and therefore 180 degrees. And BD then would have to be a diameter. Okay, um, but that's only because that angle is 90 degrees. If we didn't know that angle was 90 degrees, then BD would not necessarily be a diameter, but in this case it is. All right, we're going on to number two. Construct the center of the circumscribed circle for quadrilateral A, B, C, D. Label this point O. Explain how your method worked. Okay, so let's think about if we just have our compass construction now. We're gonna, what we really need here is since we know B, D is going to be a diameter, even though we haven't drawn the circle yet, we know that somewhere on there is the center of the circle. And we know that a radius would get you right to the center. So if we could find half of that diameter, then we know where the exact center is. But how do we construct that? How do we get that exact halfway point using a construction? So that's where we have to use our perpendicular bisector construction. So if you are using your compass, remember that's the construction where you kind of reach your compass more than halfway across and you kind of make that semicircle arc from one side. You do the same thing from the other side, keeping the radius the same, and then you connect them up, and that will produce the perpendicular bisector, which I just did a terrible drawing job sketching. But remember, that's how you do it. And you could do that right now, start doing that. I'm gonna to try to recreate that on GeoGebra over here. It's gonna take a little bit of work. You guys can try to follow along here as well if you wanna try it yourself. Um, but it's a little bit different because I don't have a compass tool. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to see if I can shrink this. I'm going to use that select tool. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit because I'm actually going to need a circle that's a little bit bigger. All right, so now what I'm going to do is try to replicate that. So I'm going to use the circle tool, but this time I'm going to use the first option in the circle tool. Select the circle with center point P. And so what we're going to do is select that and I'm going to go B and select D and it creates a circle with center point B. All right. And then we're going to do the same thing from the other side. So we're going to select D and then B. And it's kind of like I just did that perpendicular bisector piece because I just did a radius from one side, a radius from the other side, but I actually used the diameter as the radius for the bigger circle. That's the only way I could figure out how to do it on GeoGebra. And now really what I'm, what I'm looking for is the two places where these cross up here, actually not that point. So this right here and this right here. So I'm going to select those two points and I'm going to connect them together, and then that's gonna be the perfect perpendicular bisector. So I'm gonna select the segment tool now, and go from there to there, and now I have that perpendicular bisector, and now I have the exact center of the circle. Oops, having trouble getting right to that point. Let me try that again. So right there. That's gonna be the center of the circle. I think it said for us, we're gonna label it as point O. So we found the center of the circle by using the perpendicular bisector. And so 
you can try that with your compass now. Construct the center of the circumscribed circle. So you're going to take that segment, do the perpendicular bisector of it so you can get the exact center and label that 0.0. All right. So where that ends up being that, that's going to be 0.0. I'm actually going to see if I can actually make the use notability to kind of create the circle here. See if that works. Works pretty well. Okay. So you're going to have something like that and you'll have that perpendicular bisector segment that goes through the middle. And that's how you knew that this was the center because you had that perpendicular bisector, just like I showed. Okay. Construct the center, label this point. Oh, all right. So since BD was a diameter, the midpoint is the center of the circle. We used the perpendicular bisector get the center or to get the midpoint. Okay. All right. So we did number three. If you haven't done number three, again, do the perpendicular bisector construction. Do you remember how to do that? We've done it a few times. Hopefully you remember that and see if you can get that center. If you don't, it's not the end of the world, you guys. You can just follow along with what I'm doing and we'll kind of cover this general idea in the notes. So could we follow this procedure to construct a circumscribed circle for any cyclic quadrilateral? Remember, the only reason this worked was that we knew BD was a diameter. And unfortunately, and not all cyclic quadrilaterals will that be true. Will the diagonal also be the diameter? Um, one of the constructions that we haven't done though is that if you have just a chord any chord at all so let's say this is a chord in a circle right here the perpendicular through that chord is always going to go through the center of the circle so if we do one we would know that that segment goes through the center of the circle this this line right here but we don't know exactly where that center would be so we would do a second one, maybe let's say one up here. And if we do a perpendicular through that, sorry, a perpendicular bisector through that, then that is also going to show us then where those cross will have to be the center of the circle. So if we do a perpendicular bisector of any two chords, then they automatically go through the center of the circle and then that would actually be a way we could figure out where the center is. Um, but the procedure that we did only worked because we knew that BD was a diameter. So we knew the center of the circle was the midpoint. And then we use the perpendicular bisector construction to figure out where that midpoint is. Or if some of you guys just took out a ruler in class right now and measured that diameter and marked where that center is, um, that wouldn't be a construction, but that would be uh, a way of also getting the center of the circle. Okay, so that was a lot, and hopefully you guys followed along as best you can with that. If you didn't, it's really not the end of the world. We're going to talk about this idea of a cyclic quadrilateral in the actual notes, but I wanted to try and see if we could do the actual...